Try and fail, I tried and fail, no. How I tried and how I fail. When I was down. Well, good morning, guys. Yep, sorry you guys couldn't go on the trip, but John and I are back in Hollywood, and this is our first day of vlogging back. Now, we had to come back today because we have a plan. We've been invited to go to our house that I've had on my vlogging agenda for over a year and a half. Something has always just made me not do it. Something's always made me change my mind, and this is probably why. You do things when you're meant to, and a couple of weeks ago, I was contacted by someone, and they said, take a look at our website and see if there are any houses you'd like to tour, and I immediately saw this, and they're making it happen. So today, we're going to go see a house that a famous duo wrote an Oscar-winning movie in, and this house is going to blow you away. Days with Jordan the Lion. These guys and jaw begins now. Well, hello there, fella. Well, before I take off to Eagle Rock, I want to take you out for a walk. What do you think? Let's go for a 20-minute walk, huh? Let's go. Are you glad to be back there, fella? Did you miss your hood? So tomorrow, we also have a planned appointment vlog, which is going to be awesome. It's a place I've been to years ago, and it popped into my mind again. I was like, you know what? I'm going to make a reservation. I want to go again. So this will be a lot of fun tomorrow, too. He's been following this dog in front of us. <laughs> All right, Lionhearts, well, we're here. Now, I've told you many times that, you know, there's always a reason I feel like something will compel me to do a vlog. And like I said, I've wanted to do this so long. And then a company contacted me, invited me out. They said, you know, look at our site, pick some houses that you'd like to see. And I said, sure. So thank you, Gigster, for getting me in here. They're basically like Airbnb for filming locations. So all the, um, all the houses, apartments, all the various different places that they have on their website on Gigster.com, they actually um, are actively running them out to movies, music videos, and things that you'll see. So this was actually just in a new Tara Reid movie. I believe it was called The Ouija Room that's coming out. But I'm going to tell you what was written here and tell you the story of this magnificent property. So let's take a look at the Egas Brash House. Well, you can tell from the street it looks like something right out of storybook land at Disneyland. And there's a good reason for that. You see, after the First World War, apparently, there was this new fad. If you guys remember when I went to Don the Beachcomber a couple of weeks ago, I mentioned that after World War II, everybody came back and they had this interest in tiki motifs and Polynesian art. Well, after World War I, people had been over to Europe and they loved the style of European art. They loved the architecture. And all of a sudden, storybook style helms became something that people wanted. Now, the original one that started, a lot of you may have seen, I've posted pictures of the witch's house in Beverly Hills. That's kind of where it all starts. That was originally located in Culver City and it was used for a movie. They moved it to Beverly Hills and that kind of started this fad. Now how this particular house came about was there was a family that lived here named the Brash family. It was a husband and wife and they loved this new style so they had met a man, an architect named Jean-Louis Egas. Now he had originally, he was French born, he had traveled all over and had studied not only architecture specifically, but he had, he had attended a school called the Cloister, which was almost an art commune that not only focused on architecture, but the aesthetics of a property, like making beauty and life come alive in a home. And so he was the perfect person to come and tackle this job. Now, this was built in 1923, and Agas and his wife actually came here a month before the Titanic sank. They almost would have been on that boat. Now, he's actually made a few houses, he's architected a few houses in the area, but this, this is certainly one of the most well-known, most beautiful, and the current owner has had it for six years. His goal is to let this live on forever. He, he just recently repainted it, and they actually rent this out for, there's an Airbnb option if you want to stay here, as well as a filming location option. Now that's a 14 foot high stained glass window. Now 
Now we'll work our way back up here. Now, when the current owner bought it, he said that the former, it had actually been on the market for six years and this entire area had overgrown. You couldn't even see the house from the street. He said the former owner was named, his name was McNaughton. So though a lot of this may look original, I'll show you what's on the gate. That was put there by him. Mr. McNaughton wanted everyone to know that this was his McCastle. So I was told that for the most part this property is original and not only is it original, but this is really interesting as well. In 1923 when this was constructed, they actually used the foundation for the house that was here before it as the foundation for this house. Now that peak right there, that was an addition in the 1990s. And I'm going to show us a little uh, workshop area behind the garage that was added a year after the house was built in 1923. But let me tell you what was famously written here. So like I said, now this is uh, available for rental for movies and Airbnb. But the former owner, Mr. McNaughton, also rented this out even before there was Airbnb. And in 1993 he wrote, rented it out to two unknown writers named Ben Affleck and Matt Damon. It was here in the storybook home that they spent months penning the masterpiece Goodwill Hunting, a movie that would give them both a skyrocketing career, would show us the depths of Robin Williams' tremendous acting, especially that scene, the first scene that he and Matt Damon have where Matt Damon's looking at the painting that Robin Williams has made and he says, I can tell by looking at your work, you're ripping off Winslow Homer, and your work screams that you married the wrong woman, and Robin Williams puts him in a chokehold and says, I can end you. I can end you anytime I want. Don't you ever disrespect my wife. Now that movie didn't even come out until 1997. It was directed by Gus Van Zant, and this is another kind of oddity that I love the tie-ins for. Gus Van Zant asked Elliot Smith, a relatively independent, unknown artist at the time, to use some of his music for the soundtrack of Goodwill Hunting. I think it was three or four songs, including a song that Elliot had written for the movie called Miss Misery. Now I've went and vlogged where Elliot lived before here in Los Angeles, and it was pretty ironic to me that he also lived in a storybook home. If you go look up Elliot Smith and the Snow White Cottages on my channel, you can see the apartment building that Elliot Smith moved into while he was working on Goodwill Hunting. How ironic is it that the, both writers and actors would live in a house like this as well as the songwriter? And the one that Elliot Smith lived in was rumored to be the houses that were the Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs inspiration because Disney Studios was less than a block away at the time. Now we're going to go inside in a little bit and the homeowner David is going to walk us around and show us some of the kind of oddities of this place. And he couldn't be nicer, I'm telling you. This guy, uh, he loves the property. He knows so much about the history because he's done so much research since he bought it. He said he originally lived in Orange County and within five minutes of accepting a job and looking up here for a place to live, they saw this and they fell in love. Now, just think of that. Sitting outside here, any time of the day, Matt Damon and Ben Affleck could have been out here having a cigarette, pooling ideas for what would become something that made them both household names. They, I mean, they literally became household names out of this movie and some of the biggest stars for the next 10 years. And it's a well-written, well-done movie. Gus Van Zandt directed, Produced by Kevin Smith and Miramax and... So here's another interesting piece. This is now separated. This is a private residence, it's different. But, this was added a year after this home was built by the same homeowners. They actually had all of this property, the Brash family, they had all this property and this was all adjoining. This was basically a, a guest cabin 
as we take this, and this is what's also cool if you know anything about filming. You saw those stairs we walked up. That's filming location. People hate that because they have to get their equipment into the house. So how cool is they actually have a driveway that kind of helps bypass some of that. So this building was the workshop building. And this was, like I said, oh, look, look at the, uh, the little accents. This carport was built in 1924. So it was very shortly after the construction of the house. Now we're gonna go inside. I'm gonna introduce you to David. And uh, you know, like I said, you hope that every house that has this kind of a story has an owner like David. Somebody who loves this place and is basically just a curator for everyone else to enjoy. He's, you know, very friendly, renting it out for Airbnb and things so that everybody can enjoy the experience. So we haven't been over to this side of the house yet. Look at that light fixture. Isn't that amazing? And big thank you to Gigster for making this happen because like I said, I've wanted, there's a handful of places I've wanted to do and get in and look around at and I would have very gladly just done a whole vlog on this place from the outside but when he told me, hey, we want to help you get in there, I said, I want you to help me get in there. Let's do this. So that's where we just came from. Just so you have the full walking experience. Hello, welcome. Oh, wow. It's better on the inside. Oh my gosh, you aren't kidding. You know, that's, that's so interesting because sometimes you wonder if somebody puts all the work into the outside just for people to see it and then they don't do the same thing to the inside and clearly this is, you're right, this is better on the inside. <laughs> wow. So that was the entryway um, with the tall stained glass window you saw from the outside. Now that's 14 feet, is that? Uh, so each panel is, is a foot tall, so it's 11. Oh, 11, wow, yeah. that's beautiful though. Look at that. We're in the living room. Uh, the living room is really nice um, because um, we both get to see outside, you get to see the trees and out into the local um, neighborhood. Um, and then um, with the steam ceiling and high ceiling here, uh, yeah, this is an interesting, and this is just, it's an old, I always ask people what do they think, but I'll open I think, it, I would have thought it would be like a, uh, for air to come in maybe, like yeah, a you, vent or you a... I think so, it's not, it's a desk. Oh, wow! And we used to have a TV, we'll probably put a little TV there again, um, but so, yeah, we just, uh, you can sit and write letters and, and things. Um, I love that. Um, so, this, this room here... Um, is actually an addition that was built in the in the 40s. Um, it used to be a little patio. The doors you're standing next to are the original exterior doors. From the outside, you might think that that there's not enough windows almost, but it's very light in here. I mean, it's very. I don't know if you saw, but the, the, the handle, the, the metal work and stuff is crazy on this door. Um, oh yeah, and um, and the old light switches. These are original light switches. And they, um, they control these, these sconces up above. When we move Oh, in, that's where the light's coming out of. That's great. Yeah. Oh, that's great. I love that. So there's nine sconces in the house. Eight of them work. We haven't been able to get the last one to work. When we moved in, they didn't work. Most of them didn't work. There was plastic ferns stuck into them. Oh, wow. Well, they were using it for something, I guess. The most interesting sconce is this one here. Oh, the boat sconce. So there is a Viking ship as a sconce. Um, that is great. I wonder what provoked that design because... Well, so we believe that... Uh, so the Brash family lived here. They built this house and we believe that um, that Constance Brash, um, the lady, um, she was an artist and a piano tutor. We believe she did this artwork and um, um, yeah, in fact, the rest, other parts of the house have now been painted over but there was other... The, the other sconces were, were floral 
paintings and things. So, um, but it gives a whole new depth to the room, honestly. Yeah, there's a lot of depth. There's also all these, each one of these things has been carved individually, so there's no two alike. Um, there's these crazy lamps. Yeah, I was just found. looking at that. I was wondering what the we story found, was. Yeah, well, we found these lamps um, down in our garage in a box when we moved in, and we didn't know really what they were. Well, we knew they were lamps because there was an old light fixture in each one, but um, I took and redid the whole thing, and we found that this is where they went. There were actually cables coming up. The, the electricity wasn't working, so we had to do, redo the electricity, but we put them back into place, so now they're at their original spot. There's another stained glass there. Um, this oh, house yeah, was originally, the original owners called this the Lotus, the Lotus House. And so there's lotus motifs, and we think this is a lotus flower. Oh! So you can see lotus on the on the. Uh, oh, that carvings. makes that makes total sense. Um, and um, did they tell you things like that when you bought it, or is this all from your own investigation? Because you you've been blowing me away with how much you've done on your own, just finding out about Jean Louis and and his story and the story in the neighborhood. And yeah. So um, we found out from the previous owner. He mentioned that the name. And the, 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 that was what the, the original owners, because he was um, he bought it from the original owners. Well, that, was that Mr. From, McNaughton and the yeah, McCastle? And yeah, he bought it from the daughter of the original. The original, um, the the husband of the family, he died in 1960. Uh, Albert Brash, and then um, um, his wife died. Constance died in 1977. His daughter then inherited and, and sold it in 1978 to um, McNaughton. So. Um, and, and he, so he met the daughter at least. Now, what's um, cool is you told me that you had done some research and you found that that the original architect's granddaughter is in the area, and you contact her, and she didn't even know that this house was here, or she had heard maybe that there was one in the area, but had never seen it. Right. So um, we were trying to go and find find out about the house. We were trying to um, register it historically, and so we needed to find out what the story was and um, started search I knew the the name of the architect and you start searching it turns out there aren't that many Agassas really it's not that common of a name luckily it wasn't not Smith. at all <laughs> it wasn't something like Smith or something that would have been possible but then this name kept popping popping up and I wrote to a few people and one replied saying well that's my grandfather and um, she had never she knew that he built houses but down in Laguna Beach, not and he and he lived and worked in Eagle Rock, but didn't know much more about it because, um, well, she there was a bit of a strife in the family. So when she grew up, she didn't know her grandfather very much. Oh. Um, so uh, and she was always looking forward to. She told me she was looking forward to retiring and learning more about her grandfather. And I actually found out a lot, a lot more than she ever knew. Like for instance, when you look at the census information, that his Agassiz's wife. Uh, all of a sudden, in like 1940, was 20 years younger, and I thought, okay, are we lying to the Census Bureau? You know, but it turns out that the first wife didn't like living in California, moved back oh, to England, and he found a new one. Finds another lady with the same first name, also English. No way! And so <laughs> that's at, crazy. You know, yeah. So there, yeah, but I didn't know. And I, when I asked the granddaughter, she then was able to fill me in on that kind of information. I love I stories really, like that. I've been able to find out. You know, uh, just as a kitchen, um, it is also where we do. You know, most of the time it's full of uh, food and stuff for the production. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the the original paint. It wasn't, it wasn't this color, it was a kind of a pale yellow, well you can see that door over there was the original color. Oh, um, okay. And so we had, we've done some work in the kitchen, um, when we first moved in we, we changed a few things around over in this side. Um, I love that you kept these up here. Those are, yeah, so there's a doorbell right on the outside of this back door that rings one of them, and then there's a doorbell in each of the two bedrooms upstairs. Really? And, um, they ring these, and, and um, it's. We think you know you could be up there and ring twice for a margarita and three times for. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's hilarious. Um, here's one more. If you look, yeah, go ahead and just see the pan, view out the window. If you pan up, you'll see another painting. Oh yeah. Um, this one is. Um, yeah, we don't know exactly <laughs> what this stands for. Or what it looks like. So, so the original owners were. were um, 
the Brash family, and they um, we've also been in contact with them, uh, some of the um, Brash family, um, and they've been able to send us. I met with one in in um, August of last year up in Idaho, and I met with another one. He came here and saw it. Um, they were um, they they had just visited here. They hadn't lived here, um, but um, one of them, the lady that's up in in Idaho. She had photos. She was a teenager. She took pictures, color pictures. So they're, they're so far they're the earliest uh, color photos we have, taken in the early 1970s. She was very meticulous for a teenager. She wrote the time and date. Oh, of, that is uh, awesome! Time and date on a lot of the photos on the back. Uh, nowadays, it's common. You know, you take a picture and it has you know GPS embedded, in, yeah, embedded in there. But at the time, you have to remember pictures were taken. Then a week or two would go by. Maybe you'd send it off to be right or longer, or, yeah, or longer. It might be in the camera. You didn't usually develop until you ran out of the film, right? right. So it might be a few weeks or months or whatever before you'd actually develop it. And, but she wrote meticulous data on the back of each one. this oh there's another one yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, this is one of the, there was one change that was made we have a photo um, the, the balcony was here but there actually used to be a very small rickety stairway that went down right here oh. um, and the um, the granddaughter um, this would have been really steep too the granddaughter of the architect said that he liked to build Stair, small stairways to nowhere or stairways uh -huh. so, so that was one of his trademarks that they changed the door we think early on it was changed maybe even you know in the 30s or 40s that this was removed and probably because it wasn't really maybe it wasn't right safe. it was just for looks um, kind of deal now I will say uh, my wife is is from Denmark so she's Viking I call her a Viking absolutely I went there um, this summer <laughs> there was, nice um, so downstairs we saw the sconce lamp that was a Viking ship. And there's yeah. one other Viking ship, um, and it's actually visible from here. But when I give tours to people or friends or something, I, and especially if, I get, if there's a kid and I tell them, okay, there's two Viking ships in the house, find them. And it gives them something to do a little bit. Yeah. The other one is oh, it's because time yeah, yeah. waste hours for you to look. The other one is actually just up here, oh. carved in the wood. I didn't realize, I've, I've seen it you know, since we moved in, but when I was up changing the light bulb up there, uh, but there are shields carved in the wood uh, along, the, uh, along the bow, uh, or along oh, the, the yeah. sides of the ship. Um, wow, the detail so, is incredible yeah. to that. I yeah, love that. It's, it's amazing. Um, so you can see that from the front door. You just don't know, don't know it. Um, when you're looking up here, but this is these are shingles that's made to look on the outside, uh, look like an outside of a village or something, um, and uh, that's one of the trademarks of a storybook house. Um, is shingles on the inside, not exactly, but something like the author of the we have. There's a book, recent book, um, by an author named Keister. He he said in his, his book signing presentation, he said the key element is something whimsical. Uh, so something that doesn't really make sense, uh, it's not functional, it's not, why would you need shingles on the inside? Right. You don't. So it's a whimsical thing uh, to have these things. He says also have balconies, he said a balcony that's too small for someone to be on or for no real reason, that's a whimsical idea. So, uh, and it is a, a rather tight balcony, yeah. <laughs> so I mean you can stand up here but it's, uh, it, it definitely right. falls into that category. The other th nice thing about this balcony for film shoots is you can get these amazing perspective shots. Right, without a crane or anything. Without having any kind of crane. This ceiling is probably from all the way on the floor to up to the top is probably 30 feet. Um, I don't know exactly, uh, 25. Um, yeah. And uh, so you get some shots where, you know, there's a conversation and all of a sudden part of it is, is up from above. So I love that. that. It goes into our a bedroom we have. Um, Another whimsical uh, yeah. <laughs> little addition. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, the windows that are curtained like that. Um, we have another window over there. That window goes into a room. Um, a oh. Um, something, other interesting thing. This, um, 
This is one of two, the Brash family that built this house, they were, um, they had a, a business, their business was radiators, and this is one of their radiators. Oh, oh, that's a great thing to keep in here then, and I love it that. it actually works, we just don't use it. Um, yeah, you're it, California. <laughs> well, it is, it does get cold, um, but we have a more modern air conditioning heater, but this one, um, is the one reason why we don't use it is way too close to furniture right now. But, All right. but also um, the way it's basically turn the gas on, stick a match in, and light. oh, so um, it, and it it's not oil or steam. It is actually flames. Uh, so oh wow, we don't use it for that reason too. Um, but yeah, actually this is a room we we do use as Airbnb. Um, oh, this is a priority, great room. We do priority for our film shoots, but we have. Have guests from all over the world. We've been doing that for three years. Um, what a great view, too. I mean, all the houses in this neighborhood, like I mentioned at the be beginning of the vlog, are just absolutely beautiful. And even though this house kind of stands out on its own, it kind of fits this neighborhood in an odd way. There are other houses yeah. that have a great, yeah. have the same kind of uniqueness to it, and that's what you want in a neighborhood, not that cookie cutter look. Yeah, one of the really nice things about the neighborhood is, and we have guests that like it too, is here's the other brash. You can even see it saying AJ Brash on the... Um, Was it Al Albert? Albert. Yeah, Albert Brash. brash. Um, they started up in San Francisco, and then in 1906, there was like this little earthquake that happened up there. Yep. Yeah, so <laughs> they, um, they ended up uh, closing shop, or we don't know exactly how, then they, they moved here. They The first record of them in Eagle Rock which is where we are now, is in 19, April of 1914. Um, they moved and rented a house uh, in an old newspaper. There was a, uh, a blurb about them. Um, I'm actually the, also the president of the, of the Eagle Rock Valley Historical Society. So Very cool. So we were trying to find out more about history, and we're doing this big scanning of all the newspapers. I love that. That's, so that's one of the things. Is there's a California digital newspaper project that you can go online and, and search these things. of All newspapers in California, we're adding ours to that. Repository. Oftentimes the um, productions need a cool attic space or something. Here we're in the bathroom. Uh, it turns out there's a door here and it goes into an attic space. Um, the attic actually goes, there's some storage here, but the attic goes all the way around, around the back there. Um, oh, wow. I'm still waiting for the first production to actually film down here, but. Um, and then there's a little surprise here. Uh, there's a door. And maybe that's for midgets. No, I don't know. <laughs> say, well, it could be elves, you know. Elves. elves the elf door. No, so what it is, is um, this was where you could put your dirty clothes. Ah, laundry, laundry chute. chute. Yeah, so the laundry chute goes down. Kind of surprised uh, it's not shaped like a birdhouse or, you know, just something like that. Yeah. If you turn around, you'll see, you're talking about windows. This is one of the craziest windows I've seen. Oh! Uh, and there's there's painting on it too, which is great. There's art. Painted, yeah. And originally, um, this window, um, when the house was built, we would have been able to see the street. Now this is that room. Oh, that right, the addition. The addition. Um, but this is one of the original heater grates. Oh, wow. I've never seen anything quite like that. Yeah, there's several downstairs as well. Um, but um, let's maybe... Uh, Go down even further with them. Um, first, let's let's look at the rest of the house. There's just one or two more things. This is where the laundry chute would have come. Oh, okay. Uh, now we've put a few shelves in here, so if someone does throw something down there, it'll get it'll just be sitting right there. Sitting right there. Um, maybe there's something in there, but anyways. Um, Anything you're missing? <laughs> and then, um, and then another. So these are cabinets for towels. But this one, that cabinet specifically is is different because it has it goes all the way through. Oh, very interesting. And I think this was designed on purpose as a very functional item. Is you can give someone a towel and yet they have the privacy in the bathroom. Yeah, yeah, so that's. You can leave them <laughs> your towel, give them fresh towels, and they don't. Uh, you haven't intruded. You don't see those anymore. That's very, very unique. Very functional. All this original tile from the 20s. Um, this is amazing. Yeah, this looks original. I mean, this. Yeah. In fact, I'm a little surprised how good a shape it's in, to be honest. 
Because that just, I mean, it looks beautiful. Looks like it's right out of a, right out of a hotel or something, man. It's yeah. very classy. Kind of, and it's a different style than the rest of the house, it feels like. Yeah. Um, but, um, it's just all this, this... Yeah, the detail and details. stuff is just incredible. Um, it's not a true master bedroom. Normally a master would have a bathroom attached. But this is uh, where I sleep, my wife and I sleep, and um, it has lots of windows. Um, it's a great space for... Your, um, your bed, uh, the four-post bed matches the, the trim and everything in your windows perfectly. I don't think you could have done a better job of that. That's and, just... and we bought the bed 10 years before we moved here. So no we, kidding! Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's also been used a lot for green room. This, this is often used as support as well. Um, and um, it's a great space for, to be, for people to relax. Yeah, this is beautiful. This is the dining room. Um, we heard from the previous owner that this was used as a bedroom, um, but um, and it could be because it, it does have a, uh, a, a closet. Oh, okay. So it technically could be called um, a bedroom. Uh, we use it as, as a dining room. Um, it has... Um, crown molding and, and is, has a really great light with the, the bay window there. Yeah, this is amazing. Um, so it's... Um, you can see the... And that's out to the The front. driveway, the entryway right yeah. there. Yeah, this, you have a beautiful place. This is just, I mean, the, the more I look at it, you just, you notice all these tiny little, little details that you may walk past on first looks. So this design, is actually the same design as the stained glass window. That's what I thought. And they purposely broke it. So it looked, this was an original tile somewhere. I don't know, maybe they made it, but then they broke it and then repaired it. This was done originally so it looked older than it really was. Um, all of them are broken. Now we have, some of them are, the floor has broken in other places, but these are broken on Intentionally, and then, yeah. And then before or while it was set, they, they fixed it. But it's the same pattern as you see on the same glass window. Again, the Lotus routine. And that's the balcony we were up there walking around on. That's the balcony. I had, that I hadn't even noticed when we walked in. I hadn't even looked up. That's the, that's the fun of being in here and getting to explore you. It's a bit overwhelming when you walk in. You, you don't see everything. In fact, when we moved here, it, was, it went several weeks before. I think even after that, sometimes you have, I'll see something and go, oh my God, what is that? You know, some, some detail that I didn't know. So this piece here is original to the house, but not here. It used to be in what we, uh, in part of the living room or the, near that biking ship and things. Um, what used to be here was a piano. Um, and you can see that they built the piano for the room because the floor is the tiles end and then there's no tiles. Yeah, you're right. So they had the piano here when they built the house. They, used, they had another piano here. We have early reports from the newspapers and things. Dueling like pianos. <laughs> Could have been dueling, but what, um, what was used for the lady, um, Constance Brash, was a piano tutor. Oh. And they would also have piano recitals. So we have newspaper clippings, well, copies of newspaper clippings um, that show or explain that there was piano recitals they would have. And, and we actually have talked to a lady. She is 97 or 8 this year. Yeah, um, you said the house is 95 yeah. years old. Yeah, so. So, but, so she, as a young teenager she grew up she was born in Iraq so she's been here that long um, but um, she was here she was a she was tutored and piano and she um, explained she we brought her here she talked about how that people would sit up there and listen to the piano they would be, um, the parents would be there and they would um, have piano recitals in this very space. That's so cool. I love hearing that. So piano right here. Yeah, there was a more of a grand piano one right there, here. Over there. That totally makes sense, especially if she's giving, you know, if she's teaching, that would it's easier to have two pianos yeah. and, and then the recitals, of course. Yeah, that's yeah. such a great history that you've been able to uncover just beyond I can't even imagine the person that sold you this house would know even a fraction of that. 
Yeah, I don't know how much he really knew. Um, he knew some things like, for instance, the Ben Affleck and Matt Damon story because he had met them. He was here. He was the one that rented it. Yeah. Um, but at that time, they were... Nobody's, yeah. Were, I was, yeah, it's hard to say nobody's. Well, I mean, they, they yeah, yeah, they were, you know, yeah. I think he maybe done school ties and that's about it, but... He had done one or two things and um, luckily for them, they kind of paid a lot, you know, so they put a big deposit in and said, you know, and then they were able to stay here. I, you hear a lot of times people that come into a, maybe a lot of money all of a sudden and they'll just blow it all in a weekend. Well, they actually blew it by, you know, some place, so they'd have some place to stay. Any and, idea how long they stayed here? Um, we think it's in the six or seven month. Right? That's what I thought. That's what I, that's about what I had heard, I thought. Yeah. Um, and again, we don't know. We do have a copy of the rental agreement. We know that, um, how much they paid. We also know um, that it, they were allowed to have other people. Mind, mind if I ask how much they paid for, was it per month or per the half a year lease or something like that? Yeah, I, I don't remember the number offhand, but um, it was, they paid like a big chunk, like $10,000 and then it was like 3000 a month or something for the entire house. So okay. That was a lot of money back then. Well, yeah, yeah. This was in 19, 19, 1992 Three? or 1993, Three. um, in, uh, and they moved in in uh, September and um, so it was probably pretty warm then, uh, but uh, uh, they, we don't know. We don't know which rooms they stayed in, you know, which one of each. each right, room, right. You know, guesses. Um, we know that um, there was an earthquake and Matt Damon had been upstairs. This was the owner saying that the owner, that Matt Damon was upstairs and saying how he was, he felt the whole house was going to come down. Um, probably in your room and probably maybe Ben Affleck had this lower room yeah, possibly so, or? Well, the lower room is our bedroom. So we were thinking he's either in, I tell some of our guests that it's very possible he could have been in the same room. Oh, the guest room, room absolutely. Uh, that, that would be the map. We, that totally, yeah, that totally would make maybe, sense. You know, if, if Matt or Ben hear this and want to correct me, let me know. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, if I ever meet him, I'll mention it. <laughs> know from, this is again the owner, the, the seller, um, the second owner. He did mention Casey Affleck. That he wanted, that he was here. We don't know if he stayed here very long, but he was here and that he was, uh, the, the, the reason why it was even brought up was that he was trying to film a short film here. And, and oh. I don't know if that was ever made or anything like that. Um, and we don't know, you know, to what level that was. Was it, was it someone, with, was he just with a video? Right, film? right, student or film it, type or thing. Was or was more of a production? We don't know. Um, again. Very interesting. Wants to let us know. Let, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's really out there. If someone else knows it really was produced, let me know. Um, but other than that, we don't know of any other filming that was done here before we started um, filming, having filming done uh, two years ago. So that would be in March of 2016. California basement. Oh yeah, that's the uh, Wizard of Oz basement. <laughs> yeah, and there's a, just a stairway that goes down. Um, watch your head when you come down here. Um, and, um, I'll turn my flashlight on, I think. This is actually, I think I'm getting it. So, you just came down the stairway. Yeah. There's another stairway over here. <laughs> it sure is. Now, uh, if you go, you can walk. Yeah, it go, goes the around the corner. And it goes around the corner and then ends. Uh, it doesn't go any further than, than right there. Um, it's basically a stairway to nowhere. Um, we believe that this stairway was the original stairway when the house there was a the original house that was on this property. Oh yeah, because and, you said that yeah, this is the, built on the foundation. There was a foundation. There was a house built here, uh, standing here. It was built in the late 1800s. We don't know much about it, but we believe that this was the edge of the house at that time. What we call the workshop. Um, so there's, you know, old bookcases, shelving here. Some of the shelving I'm. I'm just working on to get it replaced here. Bookcase here is actually uh, a little bit loose. It's actually very loose. Oh, uh, and you just told me that, you, how long ago was it that you found out about this? Oh no, this one we found out when we bought it. There's another one I found out later, but this here has been filmed quite a few times because how often do you see a secret passageway? And this is the attic for the garage. You can walk in there if you want, but it, or just stand, whatever, but it's, um, it's a um, wow. 
That's so cool. I love seeing stuff like this. Yeah. Well, David, thank you so much for showing us your house and not only showing us your house, but making it available to the public so that they're able to come and enjoy it too, whether it's Airbnb or filming or whatever. You know, I go to so many of these great places every day. I, my goal in life is to see something amazing every day that maybe somebody else wouldn't get to see. And when I meet somebody that loves the place as much as you do and has kept it so accurate and just put so much love into it, it makes me really happy to get to meet you in person to, to see that, that you care that much, you know? Well, from thank, from just the coming. street, I would have never gotten to know that. Right, well thanks for coming, and uh, it's funny, because a lot of people ask, you know, does anybody live here? And, and it's like, yes, we do, but we also like to have it in, in filming and things. Um, I bet you're a favorite for trick-or-treaters. Well, little hint, uh, this is like a magnet for trick-or-treaters. We run out of candy every year at 750 pieces. And, wow! And we, don't, we don't really decorate that much I mean we put a few things there's some amazing things on this street so it's like it is truly like Disneyland I like to dress up um, and give out candy but when I run out I have a sign already that's ready to go saying out of candy and so then I'm walking around too to see the, the festivities so that's great, great you're, you're such a great person David thank you so much for letting us see your place okay well thanks for coming well good evening guys that might be our longest vlog ever but we've never been inside of a storybook home to get to see all the little nooks and crannies so I think it was worth it I want to thank Shane Ford for becoming my newest patreon I wanted to thank David for letting us see the inside of his house and thank you gigster for letting me uh, helping me get in there and hooking it all up so thank you gigster.com and have a great night everyone We'll see y'all tomorrow for another big day. Have a great night and goodbye. Just last week I had a taste of